um hello guys welcome to this tutorial so after seeing that we had some delays with tutorial upload and so on i decided to come up with this uh, short tutorial on basic crew to laravel and since your task was to create something like a user management system with laravel which had to do with mvc both the view the model and the controller i wanted to use this tutorial it won't be long to so just show you the basics on how you could go about that i gave resources but some people complained that it wasn't that enough so okay so we will just get started i'm going to create a new laravel app uh, laravel new and i'll call the app group right now you might be wondering why i'm using laravel new uh, some of you are using composer create project but that's that's okay i'm using laravel because i have fully installed laravel and established its parts on my system <coughs> so <coughs> excuse i am just going to create the app here and uh, <coughs> oh. laravel new and this should take a little bit of time but not that long okay so uh what is happening now is the project is being downloaded with all its dependencies and so on our project uh, this tutorial will just have to deal with how to deal with blade template how to actually route your application how to work with models and uh yeah and controllers so while waiting okay so now when you create a new app it automatically creates a uh, your dot env file which is environment variables and sets the database name especially for laravel to the name of the app so if i create a laravel app called uh, crude then it's going to create an env file with a database name called crude so basically you need to go to your database maybe your xamp or whatever uh, management system you're using and create a, a database called uh, maybe crude for example since i my, my laravel your application name is crude okay so uh, basically that is what i have now and i'm going to open that with vs code so i should enter into it and I'll open visual studio code here basically that is it so we have our laravel application created up and running and what i meant was this this is what i meant right so if you come to your environment variables and these configurations you see that the database name is crude because my application name is crude and what you need to do for this to run is you need to go to your database manager and create a database called crude for example i will uh, advise you actually follow this up the way it is and just set your configurations here for your database now let's test our application to see that it is running so what i'm going to do is i am just going to start the application php artisan self and go to my browser browse 8000 as a default port and yeah our application is installed up and running your task for the first yeah the first task on laravel dependencies and other like was for you to change a default template to print hello laravel i'm just going to do that so you enter the resources views and then this welcome.php and i'm just going to edit this to be hello laravel right okay so with that if i actually reload i have hello laravel here our application is up and running now the next thing for us to do is okay now we have our application installed we might need a model right user model because our task yeah we might need a model to uh, to uh, represent the database the model is database representation so i will just create a model here and that model represents a database table like i said so i'm creating a model um this application i'm going to be able to uh, register an item delete the item update the item and uh, yeah basically the the crude application that you can do on the item so i am going to just uh, create a model and that model will be called uh, item model right so php artisan make model uh, item 
right and i'll enter and i'll also create a controller php artisan uh, make controller and i'll call that controller item controller <coughs> now that is up and running <coughs> what i need to do is okay i have created my model and if you want to see if i go to app uh, models you see this item model that has been created this item model okay so now we have that item model but for us to actually link it up with our database we need to create a migration for it so i might want to do php artisan make migration and okay sorry make uh, migration <coughs> okay sorry uh, so I'm going to actually so we've made our migrations and if I go to my uh, database migrations I should have a migration called item and this is what we have right so our item mm, so i'm just going to copy this and replace something so for the up what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a a table called um, items a blueprint of tables so i'll have id and i just have two things table name so that's going to be a string so name okay so i'll have just that and this timestamp is very necessary for a laravel application and that is it what i'm going to do i'm just going to migrate now because i i have my table that i needed which is called items so i'll do php at this and uh, migrate and hopefully that should go now so these migrations have been done and you have several migrations you have item you have there are just a lot of them you just because Laravel comes with default migration. So if I should go to my local host right now, local host, uh, host slash php my admin and check my database table that is called crude. Here it is. I should have a table called items, right? This is it. And if I open those items, you will see now those columns that I created. These columns represent this migration that was created here so when uh, i run the migration a table is created right so um what i what would i say about this this up function is basically basically when you want to maybe create table create yeah to create things on the database the down function is used to for example remove a table and so on so basically when you create a model it creates a migration it's just that what we use we do not actually use the the full syntax so we could use php artisan uh, make model then model name then you add uh, dash dash migrate at the end to create the migration but no problem so we have our table on the database and we are cool so next thing for us to do we have our model we have our controller and we have our view so i'm just going to come to my views and i'll create a view or item dot blade dot php items dot blade dot php this is going to display the items for example so <coughs> what i'll do here is i'll just create 
it's just a view for now so items will be displayed here right and <clears throat> next thing right i did not actually take you through the full architecture because you have tutorials for it that will be uploaded i want us to just work with something so our application is an mvc application the model the view and the controller all of these have to be linked and one of the ways of linking it is via the route right for if you are working with things like apis uh, you use api.php to do your routing now since we are returning web views and so on we use the web.php by default in laravel and our hello laravel this is a route for it so use a get and then uh, this forward slash is the, the the path that we use on our listen on our search bar for example or localhost forward slash so whenever this url is passed then it knows that this is what is supposed to return okay so what has happened here is this route has linked this view to this url right but uh, we could now do what we could just um, link this to let's say a controller and i'm going to do just that let's uh, link our view our items view to a controller so that we actually see what i mean so i have a um, route get and i'm going to pass items and these items i'm going to have a let's call the user controller sorry item controller colon, colon, class and let me pass my view my my method name that is going to be called so i'm going to call that uh, show items for now don't worry about whatever this is i think let me see if i am right okay. So I'm also going to import the item controller here. Use item controller with this imported. Okay. Now what happens? I have routed this item so that whenever I type localhost forward slash item on my URL, it's going to come here and know that okay, go now to the item controller and uh, do whatever is in the show items function so i'm going to go to the item controller that i created and i'm just going to create a function show items and um, well let's see for now i'm not passing any requests so i'll return items or i'll just return the view the view items right now what has happened is okay this is a full mvc now the model we have not used the model yet we have not talked about we have not done anything with the database yet but what has happened is okay we have the view here on the resources view and this item so .php, has been linked via the web.php using the route right to the controller and that controller is now returning the view. Now, if I try running this, I think localhost localhost colon colon eight thousand. No, our application is now running. So, PHP design. Okay, so if we now check this, okay, this is hello Laravel for the normal home view so if i type items you see items will be displayed here now it has returned our view right that we wanted but now we are working with the controller and i want us to actually do something else in this controller let this controller return let's check it out so return a, return an array so i have name Item one, for example, uh, let's go to put array. 
Okay. The next thing. Description. Size. Yeah, let's just let's just end with that. Okay. So now this is now returning like a JSON. Uh It's now returning like a JSON. It doesn't return the view anymore, and you actually see this, right? So this is what will basically happen when you have not returned the view. You just want to return a JSON, uh, JavaScript, or how they call that. Okay, so you have this, and if we had some data in the database, we could return it, and it will be returned like this. Our view now, we can do whatever we want to do with this view. All right, let's just, just kick start into our application and see what exactly I'm talking about. So basically, I'm just going to add something, uh, bootstrap. Uh, so I'll just go to the bootstrap website, bootstrap. I just want to create a simple form to upload an item. And yeah, so. <laughs> Oh, my network is really bad. Okay, so let me get to Bootstrap CD. I'm sorry. Bootstrap. This could be done with whatever I'm using. So let me go to my views. And uh, your view can actually write the, your normal HTML. And that's not going to cause any problem. So for now, See, HTML5. I'm just going to link Bootstrap CD in here. Link, link Bootstrap CD. Okay, so I have that now. I have the link to Bootstrap, and uh, I'm just going to create a form. Form. So form, right? And for now, let's let me just keep that action aside. And what I want in this form is uh, dot row. No, have a label. A label with one name. And I'm going to have an input with a class. Class um, control. I'm going to have the name. Let me just see what that has for now. Just to make sure that I'm on track. Okay. So, let me go back to my route and, and fix that. We have something that we need to... Okay. Let's fix that for now. So... Let me see what that has to offer. Okay, so we have this form for now, and uh, I'm going to let's just let's just do a little bit of styling. Maybe I should go to the bootstrap documentation and get form. <coughs> Simple registration form. Just. Okay, let me load that up and hopefully that should load. So I have that now. Um, let me see what this has right now. It should give me an error. Okay, so I think I have this now. Let me see what this has. Okay, so I have this. Let me style it a bit. Forget about whatever style I'm putting here. It's just, it's just to uh, make things look a little bit presentable. Form. 
going to set the uh, weight to the week to 500 pixels and see what that has to offer. Okay, so it's there now. Um, uh, imagine auto and let's see what this has to offer. Okay, so our form is centralized and um, okay, we have a centralized form and just to make sure you see it well, my look a little bit unpresentable, but this is what we have right now. And I don't care, I care less about the styling right now. So let me just put something at the top here. Okay, so we have this simple form, your name, email, password, password, but we, we wanted just the item name and what was in our model and I just item name yeah that was basically it so i'm going to get rid of all the other fields it wasn't necessary so i have just the name and let me get the button Button press. Let me call it. This is bootstrap, but it's not necessary. Uh, submit. Let's see what this has right now. Okay, so we have this form right now. So when we type, for example, I will click on submit. We're expecting that it will actually lead us somewhere. But for now, whatever is here is not uh, is not linked. Good, we have our form now, and the next thing, the action, we're going to set the action to, uh, to uh, what should we call the name of the route? Let's create a route for it, say, at item, for example. That's the name of our route. And we'll come to the route.php or web.php, and now, I don't want to actually explain everything, but yeah, basically, um, for the create, if you want to create an item into a database, you use the post method. You want to um, get an item, you use the get method. You want to update, you use the pull, and so on. So basically, these things I we already did them. So uh, I'm, I'll just go ahead and route them. So add item. That was the name of our URL, and I'm going to say add item that's going to be the name of my method in the item controller so i go now i have routed it i go to the item controller and i create another function function uh, add item then i'll take in the requests and i'll call the request type as request so what i will get is okay i want to get whatever is from is passed from the front end so what i'm going to do i'll just return for now let's just see what is the return um request okay let's get whatever was passed in and see go back let me rephrase this and say item name is my name whatever right and click on submit you now see that uh, it goes to the controller and look at what it returns it returns the name and that is it uh, what is here is called a CSRF token right which is for authentication now let me show you where it is let's go to our view you see this CSRF right this method is used when you are submitting data to maybe the back end. This is going to identify the, the maybe, yeah, it's just like an identification, especially for post method for forms, you use this. So now we have that, and at the level of our controller, we are able to get this, right? Now, I don't just want to get that. What I want to do is, I want to actually create an item. This is where the concept of 
object-oriented uh, programming comes in and the concept of classes and object. Remember the model we created. We're going to use that model here now. Let's import it. Use uh, item. Right. And that is the name of the model that we created called item. What we are supposed to do is now we have gotten the data and we can get the data from here. What we need to do is um, first let us create a new object for the uh, item model. This is going to be a database representation of what is in the database. So I have item is equal to I use a new, then I call the item class. And then now I have my item.name, right? Look at what happens here. <clears throat> we have this now. This is an object that has been created, right? And since it represents the database, we now can reference the database uh, column names. For example, on our database, we have a column called the name. So the item.name is equal to now when we send our post request to the back end, that request has keys and values. And this is what I mean. <clears throat> when we filled our form and submitted, we have key and value. So we see this key here, name, my name. If there were others, they will be displayed here. So I can get the request at this index. This is where arrays do I use. So that's why you have request name, right? And if you want to actually see what I mean, for example, I can use a return. Um, Let's return the item name so that you just see. And if I refresh this, the item name is my name. And you can actually see that very well, right? Okay, that now has actually, we can get that value. The next thing for us to do is, okay, let's save this data into the database. And this is basically it, right? If this is done, I should return redirect to items. <coughs> Oh, for example, just just to make you know that we have actually sent this thing. So I'll use re result uh, request session. Uh, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> request session, and then I'll put um, for example. Let's give you the success as a key. And item inserted right okay we have item inserted we can now go to our items at play.php and we just check since we'll be redirecting back to this we can use uh, if session column column has success let's just display a message right as a success um, okay so we have that for now let's refresh that and you see this printer here item inserted and it returns back if i add another one you still get this if i add another one you still get this now let's show a proof that this actually went let's go to our database local host my admin and let's go to crude and inside crude we're going to check items and you see that there are actually three items in the database right these are the things we inserted and this created at and updated at their their current like their default value so it's a current time of insertion and the current time of update that is it that is how you normally insert items into the database okay so i'm going to uh, change these things a little bit um create another view called show show dot lead dot php right now this show.blade.php is just going to display whatever is in the database or whatever is gotten from the database it means that we go to our route and actually create another route for that route i'm going to use a guess since we are getting data from the database and i'm using 
people just going to write that show items. <coughs> so now we will route this and then we'll go and implement this, right? So inside the item controller, we have to implement this function. And basically this function, what I should do is I should just return item or basically that is it you see how powerful mvc is and how powerful Laravel is this alone is going to um, query the whole database this is the same as return everything from the items table on the database so if i actually go to my browser and use localhost show items <clears throat> You see this JSON that is returned here. You actually see item name from Andrew. You see another item name from Andrew and so on. So this is it. We have been able to return this data, but this is not what we want. We want to do something with this data, right? So I will come back here and store that that data somewhere. So I can say um, items, store it in an array items equal to this right and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to return now the view return a view call um, show items that's the name of the view with some data right our data is going to be called items and we're going to pass in these items so it's going to now return to this view with an array in it right so that if we go to the array if we go to the view let's go to the view please let's go to the view a real project structure can okay let's assume that this is a view let me just print out the, uh, the data here so let's take note of the names please this key is what you will print out right it's not the name of this uh this uh, variable that I created is the name of the key that you pass here, All right? So uh, our view is called show, not show item, because our grid template is called show .php. So how do you know the name of the view? Is the first, for example, the first word before the blade. So the view name for this show .php will be show. The view name for this items of .php will be items, and so on so if we actually go back and refresh this we get the same data right but not what is here it is now in show.blade.php right okay so i will come back here to the show.blade.php and uh, i'm actually going to still use html here uh, let me just say link bootstrap cdn i want to get a cdn for bootstrap there are really very cool ways to do this you don't need to always be linking it you could use one file to link and then link the files and others but uh, let's just handle this right now we have that right so what we need to do what i want to do is to display those items i'll use the for each loop for each uh, items as items right i'm going to create a table now let me start with the table so table i'm going to give this table a class class table, table strip So what I need to do is, okay, I want to create a table row and this table row is going to have some table data for it, table head td and I have id, I have name and then I have another thing called action, right? I have that, right? The next thing I want to do is for each of these, I'm going to create a table row, T arrow, 
and I'm going to display the name and the ID and the name, right? So I am just basically going to put the item. Now look at how I'm going to display variables in play template. Variable that is passed from the uh, the controller. I use this curly bridge two times, right? Look at how I did it, and then I pass in the variable name. So my for each loop calls item as item, and then I'll pass in ID and the name, and then I'll pass in some two buttons here or two links here. A and this one is going to be delete um, and delete is going to have the id so half item id yeah so i'll call it delete i'm going to start this a bit plus btn btn danger and hopefully let me see how that looked like here so we are not out of out of line all right so i'm expected in my file sorry i did not end my for each and for each yeah okay so we have that now right we have that display let me try to actually start this table a little bit i'm just going to give an inline style in width uh, I'm going to give it a width of 600 pixel and good we have a width of 600 pixel and margin of zero photo let's see how that works okay doesn't go margin auto sorry zero auto and add it in the class M. I'm not much of a front end designer, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so this is good now, and we have our items being displayed. I'm going to explain it again. Let me just finish with the styling. So I say H1. Items, right? Yes. For okay. Plus M. Okay. okay. So I think we have that right now. Uh, we have an issue here. H one. Mm. Why not just try this out? Start takes a line. Enter. Sometimes. What is happening? Okay, so we have items being displayed right now. Now, this is what we have. Okay, let me explain the code right now again. We routed that when we click, when we type show items, right, it should go to the controller. Let me show you how the route works. When you type on show items, it should go to the items controller and run the show items uh, method or function, right? Now, when it runs the show item method, what does it do? It retrieves all the data from the database using the item model like i said the item the model is a representation of a database table or representation of data of the database so it goes here it picks out all the data using this query and then returns to this view called show with those items that it has actually picked from the database and then now we can go to the view and then use the for each loop or whatever loop you can use to display those items let me try to format this a little bit. Okay. So I have that now, right? Let me actually add another one. Go 
of view and that one is going to be btm btn uh, success or info let's see how that works so you have that now right and sorry that is not what i meant i want these two to be in one table data so okay so i have that delete and view when i click on this view it should send me to somewhere if i click on this delete it should send me to somewhere now let's implement all of that okay we have this next thing is let's take care of the delete right so this is the delete so we need to route something let's go to our route and that's going to be called get and measures the delete and then i'll pass in the id and i'm going to call the item controller and use the delete right the same thing with show uh, view view one i'll just call it view one and that's what we have for now okay i'll go to my controller now and i'll implement a delete function delete and that delete is going to take in what the id for now i'm just going to return the id so that you see that that works and for view one I'm just going to return something called item column column find and I'm passing the ID. Right? So this delete is just going to return the ID for now and this one is going to query the database where the ID is equal to this ID. This is what this find does. And then return it. We have not created views for that yet. Let me make sure that this is working. So this is going to be called view and okay let's test our application now when i click on delete it returns one because the id is one if i click on this one it returns two because the id is two if i click on view it just checks to see if there was an id called one right if i click on view checks so let me see there is an error <coughs> item controller item column column fine uh let me see what that problem is because well let me see uh i'll use another method here but, uh, Item. All right. I want to make sure that it's working before starting implementing. Okay, so we have the item being returned, right? Good. Now let's fully implement this. For delete, what we need to do is we first of all need to check if the ID is there. Now, so we use the item. So uh, we check the item. If the item is there we use the delete function of the item model and then we redirect to this so we could actually uh, i'm going to use sessions to actually show confirmation message request uh, session oops Specical item deleted request session. So for now, since we, we are not passing in the request here, we might want to actually call the session itself from the, the main class, right? You call the session class and we're going to, since it's a static function, you will use the static method of calling uh, functions so you have session column column put 
and then something like that and we are going to do the same thing for this view one return view since we are passing we are returning a view so show item i'm just going to call it item one item because we want to view one item right and that is it we have this and let's a little bit implement the uh the views right so i'm going to create a new view called item php i'm going to actually just just show the item for now uh, so i'm just going to display the item that we have found in the database and when i reload this and show this okay item view sorry our routing was not correct return the view called item instead of item view now if i reload that that should work uh, view are we return sorry return this view and this is our view right and for now the reason you are seeing this json is because we haven't formatted anything if we wanted to format let's come to our item.play.php and actually format it right so i'll just use the form For now, nothing to show. I just want to see that row. I want to create a row. And pretty much it. Uh, let me just, I'll just display the name, the ID, and the name, right? And I'm going to use the value here, the value attribute of the input field to show what was there. So I'll use value is equal to so I have item name and the same thing for ID. So let's try to refresh this and see. So it's actually showing sorry I from item okay my input is having an issue okay so here we are so it returns this item with whatever was there that's what they call view now let, let me format that a little bit i'm going to add an update here Give the row button. Plus. Again. Again. All right. A bit. And I'm going to style this form a little bit again. Uh, style equal with 600 pixel uh, margin photo. And let's check that out now. Okay, so we have that in the center. Um, I'll make it like a form class. Form. Oh. And this one is going to be form control so that we have something well styled. Basically, we don't, we have not linked the bootstrap as I said. Okay, let me just copy the link to the bootstrap and let's add that at the top here. Let's see how this works out. All right, so we have this now. I then this and this so when i click when i actually do stuff here i should be able to update for now but there's nothing on it yet we have that up and running and the next thing 
I'm sorry I'm a little bit fast on this tutorial, but I just want to show you exactly what the kind of thing you should be doing in your in your task, right? So I have this now up and running and I'm not going to work on the update since I've already done the other ones, but the action should be uh, let's say item let's say updates. Right, and this is going to be CSRF token so that we actually get the data in the back end. Okay, now our controller has the delete and yeah, the view one. And I'm going to add the update function update. We'll take the request. Sorry, we we'll take the request. I'm going to call it request. I'm going to actually just get the item and update it. Right, that's basically what we do. We need to do. We need to first of all get the item ID and check whether the item is in the database. If it is there, we just update, and it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Uh, update. instead of this we have fine yeah so we have this and that's pretty much it right that is how the update works and uh, let me test the application a little bit show items and I click on delete it should delete and send me back code to abstract method or to member function on ignore. All right, I think there should be an issue. We had already deleted the first one. Yeah, that's that's the problem. So those are checks you could do if the item exists before you delete. If it does not exist, then you return an error. So I'll actually try deleting another item. So let me make it item two right and click and it deletes and we have just one item left because we deleted the others if i click on view it actually does this and if i put here uh, data and i click on update it's basically supposed to update right uh, two minutes. okay update so we have update request of name call this let them go to this okay so if i do that attempt to read property id on no let me refresh this and the data and try to update it okay we have having issues here because request i don't know so I know. Let me see what the issue is. Let me just return the ID, the item for now. Item name. Um, return item. So we see what is happening. Oh, sorry. We are surely linking to somewhere else. So let's see. Update action update and we come to web and there's nothing like update so let's just add the view call update post i'm going to call that Update and see how that works right now. 
think that was the issue we had. So, data. Um, view update. We have an issues. Okay. Platform method post. Alright, so we have that update now and um, this is getting to the view. So let's handle the issue that we're having. The issue we're having right now is the update might not need get in my needed post. Let me see what that is right now. Okay, the post method not supported for this route. Uh, Get method post CSI. Let me just see what that is right now. I'm going to use the post method here and um, Yes, uh, I have. Um, my support it. So I use the post. Let's see. Post method not supported for this one. Supported methods such as. Okay, I'm going to handle that later. Let me see. Update. Where's the update? Let's return item. Okay. Trying to figure out what the issue is. Motion update web. So I have item controller post and let me see what this is here. Action update. Okay, so all right, I think we are good now. Item property name assign name no. So we'll get the ID and the name here is going to be called name. ID is going to be ID. Okay, so I think the error should don't appear anymore. That is good. So we have that now. So I'm just going to save that right now. Um, this. I thought this tutorial is not going to be long, but it looks like yeah, it's going to be a little bit long. So I have this. I get it, and I update the the name, 
and then I save it back. So when I take this save, it's not actually going to save a new entry, it's going to update what is there. So I could use the session, the request session. Put in some success message here just, just for the view. So I go to the item controller and uh, let me see. I just keep in here this session. Yes. Uh, oh, success. Oh, okay. This should have okay. If this has success, then I should just print out the success and then forget it after that. But I'm using session. There are really many ways to echo this out, but I'm just using the easier one. Forget. Forget success, right? So. I'm going to try to update, view this and then update it to all right it's somewhere else let's let's return it let's return to the item let's return view item instead of items right update okay so let us update this again to another updates and click Okay, not found. Okay, so we have a view called add items, right? And we can add our item um pop of water submit and it actually adds and you see cup of water view. You can see cup of water here and kind of let's change cup of water to cup of tea and update. And it updates and if i go back to view or to show items you have this list of items i can delete an item and it is deleted i can view the item and so on so a little walk through uh, two minutes walk through the code so i have my views here to show a specific item to add an item right though these namings are not so good to add an item i have a basic form here take note of i use these names as key values i'll show you that in a few minutes then i have this show that will show all the list of items in my database and this is my normal landing page right so i could just have some now and just bootstrap yeah Mm, that is delay so I'm normally going to just copy this and close that uh, okay I'm just going to have three links that do some particular particular top, uh, stuff so I'm having the first one for for items and uh, I'll say show items at btn info. What do I have here? Okay, show items, and that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to centralize this a little bit. Give dot to paste it in here. Okay, so I think 
Uh, I'm saying that it. Okay, so I have that. Um, so margin of map five. All right, this is basically my application now. I have that this landing page. I can actually. I just have one button. Let me add another button to add item. For example, items. Um, add items. Right. So that. Okay. So I have this add item and show item. One will be primary. I have this too and I go to add item it should take me to this and I can fill an item and submit and that if I go to show items I get a list of all the items right recap now what happens okay so I have these links and these links are actually being understood with the use of these routes right I use this route to do my linking uh, this is a short way of doing routing, right? You use the either the get or the post or the put. If you just want to link a particular view having no logic, you use the route view. If you want to actually link to a particular class, you can use this representation route, for example, post add item, a class, and then the, uh, the method that is being called. So I have my one model. And that model is called the item model, right? This item model, I created it and it has, uh, sorry, item model. It has, uh, let me go to the item model migration file database migrations. And I think this is it. It has some columns. You can customize the columns here or you might just create your database directly and link to it without actually putting this. I have my model. I have my view, which is this blade template here. I have my controller called item controller. To create a controller, use PHP artisan create controller or PHP artisan make controller, then the controller name. So I have my item controller with some functions, right? Show items, add items, and all of this. So I'm able to return redirect, I'm able to return a view, I'm able to perform logic, and is, I am able to use my models that I created. Since I said the model is database representation of tables and so on. So I can actually call the model and call the particular method. If I want to get a particular ID, I use a find. If I want to save, I use a save. I want to create a new uh, item and insert, I use a save and so on, right? That's basically it. I have my view, I have my model, I have my controller, and then I use the routes to actually route the whole application. That's basically it, guys. Uh, this tutorial might be a little bit confusing for those who are very new to this, but I just saw that it was necessary to actually add this up. I hope it was actually helpful with your um, tutorial, with your task that you have at hand. And yeah, while the other tutorials are loading, see.